Hopefully we have no problems tonight. Hey. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Long time no see. I know. I know. How's it going, man? <laughs> I'm doing we good. Missed we missed you on the uh, the pod or the stream on Saturday. Now, was that the uh, the roundtable Jedi discussion type of thing? Yeah. I saw that, yeah. I'm well, not uh, well informed 100% with that, but that's okay. <laughs> I think your input would have been pretty interesting. Is uh, what, only watching two of them now? But, yeah, yeah, technically two of them. I'm still thinking about dedicating some time to go to Disney Plus and, and kind of check all those out, you know, all the previous ones. So. It's not a bad idea, especially when they're there, right? Like, it's, it's one thing if you have to go out and buy them, but if you're already paying for Disney Plus. Exactly. Everything's so, at your fingertips now, so. It's very true. And then HBO Max comes out tomorrow, I think. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Too yeah, many. See, so so a, a, co a couple of coworkers were, were talking, and, and, and we were saying, you know, how is this going to be different than the regular HBO they've had on for decades? Do you know? I mean, other than co co the content, I guess? It's just the content. And I, I really do think that they're going to phase out things like uh, HBO Go and, like, HBO Now. So, the, like, HBO, I don't remember which one's which, but one of them is if you have a subscription to HBO, you can watch it uh, on the go. The other is a standalone subscription for HBO. Okay. Um, I, and then there's DC Universe as well. So they're starting to poach shows from DC Universe. And I just feel like they're going to all, they're going to condense mm -hmm. it all. But other than that, there's nothing really, like, fresh and new and unique to them yet. So mm -hmm. okay. they're just, I think, banking on a huge catalog of stuff. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I caught from the DCU was the uh, the Swamp Thing show. Yeah. I really liked it. I really liked it. Yeah, and what's interesting with that is CW is grabbing Swamp Thing um, to at I least re replay their first season. So who knows what that leads to? Because people liked it. Yeah. So, well, hey, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, really wanted to chat with you. Uh, we obviously only met a couple of weeks ago, but have had mm -hmm. some good conversations centered around Star Wars mainly. But. Uh, <laughs> You're, you're very similar, it seems like, in your interest to me when we talk about, you know, the different the news topics that you're posting and sort of the direction that you're going with all your content. Yeah. Um, and, you know, your videos are a lot of fun to watch. So I wanted to get you on here and learn a little bit more about what makes you tick. Um, yeah, thanks so, for having me. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about where what got you started. So uh, just movies in general. Uh, I've had a huge, huge uh, just kind of upbringing with just them in my life. Um, mainly because my parents uh, split at a very young age. So I'd see my dad on the weekends, and what we would do for activities is watch movies, you know. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'd go to Blockbuster, you know, the whole, the whole spiel. Of, that was the event, right, going to Blockbuster and, and picking out your top two or three movies that you were going to see in the weekend, if not, like, video games, you know. But uh, movie-wise, it was always a lot of horror movies. My dad was really into horror movies and uh, martial arts movies. And, you know... <laughs> Back then of the 90s, uh, you had a lot of like, uh, Ch uh, Chuck Norris was kind of phasing out. He was more of an 80s thing, but you had like Steven Seagal. You had Jean-Claude Van Damme, a lot of the, you know, Sly Stallone and stuff like that. And Don't Arnold Schwarzenegger. one of my favorites. It's not exactly yeah. martial arts, but it's, you know, Jean-Claude. <laughs> yeah, in that same realm. And, it, and it's like, yeah, I know he's kind of doing the, a lot of the futuristic things like Time Cop and whatnot. But it was all kind of centered around sci-fi and horror my dad was really into. So I kind of grew up just a, around a lot of that. And um, one of my first jobs, incidentally, it was, you know, or like, you know, not not by planned at all, but was working at a movie theater. And I got to say, if you have any young viewers, well, probably not now, you know, <laughs> technically, but uh, working at a movie theater was probably the best first job that you could ever have. You know, it just whether you like movies or not, you kind of learn from the ground up. Yeah. You know, the insides and outs and stuff. And and I just fell in love with movies. I, I really just liked watching people's reactions to new movies because, you know, we were putting them, this was around the whole time, I'm older, so uh, this is around the whole time of, like, when the Harry Potter movies were premiering, when uh, Star Wars Episode 1, 2, 3, when yep. these were premiering in theaters, and this was back when it was, like, an actual midnight release, you know, so you'd have midnight showings. Yeah. Yep. And I still will never forget it because at that job, I, th I think it might have been for a Star Wars release, so there was two showings, a midnight showing, and then, like, one, like, at 1230 like two two theaters showing it right sure by the time the last crowd let out my manager was so stressed out she fell on the floor and had a seizure oh my god she she legit had a seizure and no one knew what to do except one person so 
that's how stressful the time it was back then managing a whole theater when these big releases were coming out, you know, and, and uh, I, you know, I still remember people boycotting uh, the passion of the Christ when yeah. it was coming out. It was a big deal. Right. Remember that? that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of my introduction into it. And then after that, I really, really just enjoyed it and mainly just talking with people about movies. And I just kind of fell into it because I did start off doing audio podcasts. And I was just a strictly audio based thing. And, uh, and then it kind of gradually uh, jumped into getting on camera and getting over my camera shyness and putting together, you know, just a little bit of background. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, videos, because I have background in uh, computers already. Okay. So I kind of like merged both the worlds, started video editing. And I actually went to a, a little course, a little schooling for video editing. And I, I was like, I got to put my skills to use. So I started just kind of doing that with the videos. And I'm, here I am. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. You know, it's funny hearing you talk about the movie theater because that was one of my first jobs too. I was working at a pizzeria and a Regal movie theater at the time. Oh, uh, nice. And the memory I always have and that I always tell people about is, I think it was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets when that came out. I have this vivid memory of working and like everyone in robes showing up. Um, uh, and then I, I'm trying to remember what else. There's another one that I can't quite picture what movie it was, but it was just always hectic at midnight showings, but it was so yeah. much fun. It was always crazy, <laughs> but it was a great time. Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was an excellent first job. Once again, if you have younger viewers, once everything gets back to normal, movie theaters are such a fun place. I mean, I met so many awesome people. We had so much fun times after work, just, you know, outside of, inside of, you, you gain so much friends. And if you do appreciate movies, it's even that much more fun, you know? Yeah, for sure. My God, yeah. we used to go to the, like, when our shift ended, we would always go to the diner. That was always our thing, like the 24-hour diner, because you were you know, there late until what one, depending on what time the movies got out. Oh yeah. You'd, you'd get out late. I mean, uh, if you were a night crew, you'd, you'd be cleaning up after, you know, a lot of people. And we had, we had people that were just bad. They, I, I, we would pick up trash of just like, uh, 12 packs, 32 packs of, of beer that were there. I'm like, how do you drink a whole 32 pack in a, a movie? But you know, a bunch of, a bunch of friends and stuff, I guess. But no. yeah, it got wild sometimes. Yeah. So tell, uh, you know, you, you started off podcasting, you moved on to YouTubing a little bit more, uh, a lot, a lot more. You're breaking into like the news breaking or news releases on, uh, on your Instagram. What, what's kind of the picture here? Like, what are, what are you hoping to be known as? Are you strictly a YouTuber or is it more of a, a full development flip talk brand? Yeah, like, well, well like what, was, what I was saying is that, um, you know, me and a buddy, a uh, close buddy, we, well, a longtime friend, a, someone I grew up with, we started just doing these reviews, uh, strictly just audio at first. He lives in Las Vegas, so it's a little more difficult. I was trying to think of, you know, how can we do this audio base? So we started that. His schedule got more hectic, so I kind of took it over as far as I wanted to keep this thing going because I, I saw not only a market for it, but I saw that there was people that started to just kind of gravitate towards, hey, I like you guys' reviews and whatnot. And I have never been one to write really too much, so I didn't want to get I didn't want to get too much into written reviews. Even though I did do a couple of those, it wasn't getting the engagement that I wanted. So I just started to kind of create these small videos, reviews, or even out and about. So one thing I started out, uh, doing was a lot of vlogs, just kind of going out uh, thrift store shopping and just showing people, if you guys are physical media, because I saw that was phasing out. And a lot of the people that I follow on YouTube still collect physical media. Yeah. And they have huge, you know, their whole house is full of them. Right? Yeah. I, I can't do it. I don't have the space, but if I could, if I could, I would, but I'll walk into a thrift store and I'll see some deals for things that I will never see again, mainly a lot of old DVDs, you know, and whatnot. And, and I was like, this is just so cool. I, I want to share it with everybody. And we're talking about going out and recording and talking to yourself in thrift stores, people looking at you crazy. And that was another fear that I had to get over, you know, just not being the, the center of attention, just kind of being in my bubble and just thinking, okay, this is going to make for a good video, at least in my eyes, it's going to make for a good video. Sure. So for, forget what anybody else thinks, you know? And I think that's what kind of deters a lot of people from starting doing video or even audio podcasts. And I see, I follow a lot of people. I, I always try to send people a follow back. You know, a lot of people don't really do that too much. Yeah. I always, if they're like-minded like me and they love the content, I'm going to send them a follow back if I like their content. So one thing I always see is that a lot of people are just text based. And I say, you know, you have a, you seem very opinionated. You seem like, you know, your stuff. Have you ever thought about doing video? And they're like, well, I'm really camera shy or I'm, you know, or this or that. And in 2020, it's very, very easy to make a podcast or, or a YouTube channel. And if you just get over that little hump, trust yeah. me, I think people will explore a whole new world. And I, and I really do want to kind of take flip, 
kind of take Blix Talk a little further. I don't know where exactly. I'm still trying to find my niche. But I just know that I love giving these news uh, stories to everybody. And, yeah. and putting that on my Instagram or, or on my YouTube is probably the main focus I want to do, at least the two right now. Yeah, and you definitely you started doing the news reports on your uh, on your YouTube. And did you just move yeah. daily? Did I just see you went daily with it? So yeah, I told Elliot in the last uh, we did the Shining uh, watch along a couple of day a uh, Friday, yeah. and I told him I said I'm going to push myself to do it. Uh, you know, I started it Monday night last night because the, the, the holiday and whatnot. So um, I think from now on, Monday through Friday, I'm going to start doing daily. And uh, on that following Monday, I might compile, like, the biggest news things of Saturday and Sunday. Because, you know, yeah, sometimes sure. it's uh, – yeah, but, like, for this past weekend, for example, it, we were kind of scarce with the news. There wasn't too yeah. much – there, there might have been some news, but it wasn't news worth talking about, at least for me. So I was like, let me save the meat and potatoes for the channel, and, you know, and then the rest can go maybe on Instagram or something, you know. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing right now. I totally get that. this weekend I like or last week I started posting the news on my website and mm -hmm. um, this whole weekend I was like I'm not posting anything like there's there's literally nothing coming out that I think is worthwhile to like exactly. up into a you know mm -hmm. a, a, a story that then hits social media um, yeah. which is just so interesting because then you get days where it's just like one after the other nonstop exactly and you gotta you gotta kind of watch it just kind of like how everybody watches the tabloids or the you know, the TMZ watches celebrities, right? You got to kind of watch the blogs, watch the, uh, the main entertainment sites, I guess. But I noticed a lot of people, oh, are you at home? Here are the top movies you should watch while quarantine. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to talk about that. You know, like right. <laughs> people could just do that on their own, looking through Netflix and stuff like that. But I, I wanted to get the meat and potatoes. And I think focusing on three to four stories, uh, I'm going to try to do it every day. Don't hold me to it. But if I miss a day, I'm going to have a good, you know, next follow-up video or whatnot. But I'm going to try to do every day, yeah. Well, that, that kind of gets me to my next question. Knowing mm -hmm. that you are also a working man, and, you know, I, I, know. I had this question for you when we were talking about news. Like, two weeks ago, you made the comment that you were posting from work real quick when you could and stuff like <laughs> that. You know, how do you balance everything? Because you are really up to date with all the news, especially, uh, but then keeping your channel going. Mm -hmm. So if you've noticed, I kind of slowed down a little bit. I might post, like, in the last like four days, I think I've posted maybe two to three times a day because I'm mainly saving the meat and potatoes once again for the YouTube channel. Nice. Um, I do. I work in a warehouse. I'm part of the uh, essential workers right now. So there are some times where I'll have a lot of downtime, meaning I'll be focused on one job and I'll kind of just be to myself. And then I'll be on a line where I'm working with like three or four other people and I can't get a minute in. So I got to wait till lunch or a break time or something like that. But once again, it just comes down to um, kind of filtering out what's the best for the, for, I guess for the for the channel, I don't want to I don't want to just be this, you know, qu uh, quantity over quantity. I guess in the beginning that was kind of my focus because I want to just flood it and get as many people just kind of watching as possible. Sure. But sometimes that doesn't equate to numbers, so you got to be. I'm still learning this. I mean, even after years, I'm, I'm still learning how all of this works, especially YouTube, and that's something that we'll get into because. I, I have a, a little higher subscriber count than some of my, my, you know, people that I follow and stuff or my friends on, on YouTube, but are they the engagement that I want? I mean, we'll talk about that in a second because YouTube is a whole different yeah, ballgame, man. For sure. It's not easy. Well, hey, let, let's talk about that because I, I've been sure. noticing that too with a lot of the people that comment on videos or, you know, may follow. Mm -hmm. How do you, how have you seen that working for you? Yeah. So, um, so initially I had this YouTube channel that was kind of just, uh, dead and and I want to so if you like if you look back at my like when I created it I created that YouTube a long time ago but there was no con there was no content for it it was just because I wanted to uh, follow other subscribers right sure. so once I started finding what I like to do which was mainly blogs or um, or just review small reviews and whatnot or even podcasts like with my buddy and stuff like that through Skype or whatever it is uh, I noticed I wasn't getting too much interaction so I just started watching a bunch of other YouTubers and that's where I think YouTube is fantastic. I wish I had YouTube 20 years ago because there's so many tutorials for video editing, oh, yeah. for uh, just, uh, um, you know, tag optimization for di different YouTube things and, you know, so many, you know, keyword generators and whatever you could look to optimize your channel, it's out there for you now. So that was something that just kind of grew from there. But I started to see numbers once I started focusing on things that weren't really me. So they might be movie news related, but it was like, for example, like I have a viral video. I have a couple viral videos on my channel. It was like the cast of Avengers sings happy birthday to Thanos, right? <laughs> and I was like, 
this is funny. Like, uh, I don't see anybody posting it. I'm just going to upload it to the channel, right? And thought nothing of it. After a month, it hit like a million views. Oh, wow. Like, it was insanity. And I was like, holy crap. Like, w like this is what people want to see. Like, not necessarily my face. Yeah. But if I'm talking about the news or if it's movie related or, or TV related or whatever it is, you got to kind of find what people want or what people are searching for. So I started just digging deeper. And a couple of those videos hit. And they blew up my subscribers. So I'm like over 6,000 subscribers. And to me, it's a big deal. I mean, I'm still considered a small channel after a year, a year and a half or so. And, uh, but it wasn't gaining me traction on like my personal videos. So I put out a review and I thought it was really good and I wouldn't get that many views, you know, or I put out a trailer, I put out a trailer reaction and I was getting a, th a couple of thousand views. So I'm like, why are they watching some videos, but they're not watching the ones that I really want them to, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. I get so, that. It, it's still that it's still that constant game and I watch a lot of YouTube you know tutorials of, of the top guys you know trying to give their seminars and speeches and stuff like that and uh, Chris from uh, talking TV was was talking about a, um, a couple of watch alongs ago that he was I think he's taking like a course or something so we're like yeah. as long as we're constantly learning to get better and that's one thing you can get lost on YouTube in a bunch of crap right so you know whether it's like other people's podcast or, or uh, cringe videos or something that's like to, to waste time. I just find myself like, okay, now I got to spend a little bit of time learning something, you know? So that's what I'm constantly doing for this. And I, and I want it to be a brand. I mean, going back to that question that you had asked, I, I want it to be a brand of e either to branch out with other people or I don't know, do merch or something. I just want to do something more with it than just yeah. YouTube videos. You know what I mean? I hear you. Yeah, it definitely, yeah. you know, I think once you, you kind of dabble in a couple of different things, you figure out what works best for you. With with YouTube, it's definitely, I'm seeing the same thing. Like certain videos that I feel like I put so much time and effort into are not getting the views. But then like randomly, I did a trailer reaction for like the King of Staten Island with uh, uh, Pete Davidson and that like yeah. blew up. I'm like, really? Pete Davidson is the content we're looking for? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things that's like, you have to, you really do have to search kind of, uh, or be on top of what people are searching for. That's why it's so imperative. And I get like, trailers always used to drop, at least when theaters were in, uh, trailers used to drop right in the morning and I go to work early. So I get to work and I'm getting notifications already that, oh, so-and-so trailer dropped. And I'm like, crap. And then I see <laughs> Elliot from movie, I see Elliot from movie files doing a trailer reaction on it and it blows up. And I'm like, no, I wish I was just like at home recording this, you know? Yeah. And I told them, I said, man, you're so lucky you can work from home. Because if I was at home, I would be just like recording as much content as I could, you know. So <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast. But ultimately, I think what it comes down to is your personality. And I have a lot of friends that say like, oh, like I, I wish I could do it, but I have no personality. But personality is something that you could build on. It's not, you're not, you know, sometimes sure. you're not born with it. You know, you, but you can, you can put on a face as soon as the camera comes on and you can, be happy and enthused about what you're talking about, right? So at least yeah. you're, you're kind of halfway there, so. Yeah, it's very true. It's very, very true. I saw you did do a, I, someone just mentioned Tenet, and it just reminded me. You did do a Tenet uh, review, though, right? Or Yeah, so so that was one that, I, I, did that come out on a, on a weekend or uh, maybe a, maybe I think a, it was last Thursday. Oh, Thursday, okay, okay. I so I remember that coming out. Oh, that's right, because they dropped it at the Fortnite party or some, yeah. some kind of Fortnite deal. <laughs> so I... I saw it hit uh, YouTube because I'm not, I don't do Fortnite or anything, but um, I saw it was on YouTube around like six or seven p.m. and I was like, "Oh, I'm home. Let me, I, you know, let me record this." So, if I can fit it in, I will. There's always a lot of other trailers that people don't focus on too, like a lot of low budget ones. Yeah. That I I I kind of want to get into maybe reviewing those because I, you also can't forget about the independent worker. You know, the independent. Um, you know, production teams or, or there's a lot of people that are putting out some good things. And I think we were talking about this in the last watch along as far as horror movies go, the future of horror movies. But I think this applies to all movies is that us taking a chance, us like the movie goer taking a chance on movies that aren't being on the big screen yet. Right. So whether that's VOD or just searching on a lot of these are just on streaming free sometimes like on, on some you can actually find on YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. So just taking a chance on on uh, on people that you think are putting out cre uh, interesting content, like tr like trailers or whatever. I've had people um, hit me up about short short movies, which I actually really love reviewing. Yeah. 
um, a, guy, a guy from Sweden, and I think someone else uh, international as well. And they're putting out great stuff, yet they're really unknowns. You yeah, know? I agree. Especially yeah. now with, with some of the independent filmmakers who rely on those uh, big film festivals to get in there. Yeah. And now, you know, unless they're doing something online, they're not able to get like, their, their stuff shown. Um, exactly. But I, I totally agree with that. I think the, the independence great and video on demand is great right now, too, because mm -hmm. you're kind of being forced to pay attention to it more. Whereas in the past, I think VOD was always seen as like, oh, if it's going to video on demand, then it, it can't be that good. But that's not that's true. That's a very good point. Yeah. That's, that's really not point. true all the time. And I think you're seeing that now where people are just kind of combing what's in there. And, um, you know, especially some of the smaller studios, you're seeing some good stuff come out on VOD. So it's mm -hmm. a... It, it, it's a blessing and a curse when it comes to the state of movies right now. Yeah, I think it's a, um, we also can't forget too, uh, going back to that, that, that shining uh, watch along just because it's so fresh in my mind is you're talking horror necessarily because that is very low budget. So when you get low budget and you get a lot of writers and creative minds thinking, you start this overconsumption of just mass producing every year, right? But that doesn't necessarily that mean that every project is going to be an A plus winner. So you got to yeah, kind of, bad. <laughs> us, us as a viewer, we're like filtering through all this stuff of like, oh, is it going to be good or is it not? Like, I don't want to waste an hour and a half, two hours of my time. Like, for example, I saw this like a movie the other night and I don't even know if I should name it, but it had a couple big stars. And I was like a big YouTuber recommended this to me. And I thought this was the worst thing I'd ever seen. Wait, didn't you post about it? I can't remember what it was. I feel like Okay, I'll just I'll just tell you what it is. It, it was a vibe. Vivarium with Imogen po Poots and Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, I watched that so, two weeks ago. Was, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that because we, I was watching this with my girlfriend and we were like, what is happening? Like, I understand they're trying to get to something, but I just didn't get what it was. <laughs> I, so I liked the story for like the first little part of it because I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. It's going somewhere good. It didn't. <laughs> like, it didn't at all. It, it was basically like he dug a hole for the entire movie, and that was essentially it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I looked at those two together. Um, everyone's been recommending The Art of Self-Defense as well, because apparently they're both in that together as well. I, I, okay, so Art of Self-Defense, is. I saw it late last year when I was flying back from New York. I, I, my brother lives out there, so I, I just saw it on the plane, and I was like, this is an excellent movie. Why did I not catch this earlier? Nice, okay. I really did enjoy. I think Movie Files uh, caught it a couple weeks ago too because he hadn't seen it. But um, that one, I, and I didn't even know I'm that that the girl in that was Imogen Poots. I, I didn't yeah. even know, and I was like, holy crap! Like she was in Green Room and a couple other flicks, you know. So I was like, wow! Yeah. Like they actually did a pretty good job for that one. Well, and that you know, Art of Self Defense is a prime example of one that's kind of like buried on Hulu right now, but it, mm -hmm. it's it's there. Like you can find some good stuff if you if you take the time to. Check them out. Oh, you know, for every totally dud or every good movie you find, you're gonna find like four or five duds that are not yeah. the best. But that's not that's kind of like the uh, that's kind of the whole hunting game, right? It's like you turn on your street, whatever VOD you got, and you're just like, all right, which one am I gonna go after today? I, I could get a good one. I could get a dud. You know, it's so true. And there's some nights that I sit there and I go through like Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, like HBO, everything, and I'm like nothing is hitting me right now <laughs> i don't want to watch a thing right now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so good and then i like turn on the office for the 84th time but oh that's um, always a good go-to though <laughs> hey not community <laughs> <laughs> um so going back to your youtube videos you were talking about what was getting the hits and what wasn't is there any yeah. one youtube video or project that you you know really that you really believe is your best or is like the one closest to your heart um, I mean, it, it seems that people, I get a, the most reaction from usually the out and about of blogs, because I guess I, I apparently I have a lot of people that collect physical media. And I, I mainly love it for, um, for just a, the nostalgic factor and also the, the, the whole hunting aspect of it, you know, yeah. finding a good buy or finding something that you know is rare and out of print. I may never watch it and I may keep it in the plastic, but if I know it's like, it's just something that not a lot of people have. I just want to hold it. I just want to hold on to it, you know, like <laughs> Gollum, my precious, right? So <laughs> I want to just kind of just treasure it and put it, put it to the side. I have, a, I have a whole shelf right here of things that you've probably never even heard of, but like on eBay, they're going for hundreds. It's so weird. But like I used to do a lot of collecting in that aspect, but then I started adding things to my collection that I, 
for some reason, I always go back to the past for some, re- you know, just growing up on all this, this uh, content that I thought was a lot better than what's coming out now, you yes. know, and, yes. and it might, it might not tra- translate time wise, you know, people would like be like Rambo, what the hell is like, that's not cool, you know, or, or, you know, something like, uh, oh, the, a prime example, me and my buddy, uh, the other day, were watching a uh, executive decision with uh, Kurt Russell, remember yes. that one? Yeah. So I was like, and we were just the whole time, I was like, I haven't seen this movie in such a long time. And I was like, they don't make action movies really like this anymore, you know, with all the diverse, detailed characters. You're on the edge of your seat, right? And it, it just got me thinking, like, I want to go back to the past. And it's, it's just a time relic of those. So I'm, so I'm going to say just kind of like my vlog videos because that's one of my authentic self and just being really giddy about just kind of finding potentially yeah. something good, you know? That's awesome. And you have a good one on your wall behind you with Reservoir Dogs. That's a solid movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. I got Pulp Fiction up there as well. Nice. Um, yeah, Dawn of the Dead. I love a lot of the old nostalgic movies. Um, good storytelling. As long as the movie yeah. has good storytelling, I don't care if it's a new director or a seasoned director. Totally cool with it. You know, a writer's totally fine with it. And there's a lot of new people that, that are surprising me, and, and that's totally fine. I mean, I, I, I love it. Just keep, keep them coming, but as long as people, as long as the producers, uh, directors, writers, remember that it's about quality, not quantity, I think we'll be fine, you know? Yeah, take me along for a ride and I'll, I'll be set. You know, I don't, I don't want to watch something that you've done 84 times before. Give me something new, give me exactly. something fresh. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, in terms of when you were kind of getting started with YouTube, you mentioned, I think Elliot is kind of an outlier for us because he's always pumping out content. Um, yeah. But who was there anyone that you kind of looked up to or that you found yourself following like more often than not uh, that you kind of wanted to emulate or you wanted to take a, a page out of their book? So when I started um, kind of doing my vlog videos, I, I was trying to emulate. Um, there is a, uh, a bit. Uh, he's a pretty big YouTuber, actually. I th- I'm not really sure his follower count, but um, his he actually lives down here in Southern California in San Diego. Uh, he goes by Cool Duder. Have you okay. heard of him? No. Uh, his <laughs> His name is Sean Phillips, and uh, he actually does acting, like, in B-movies. So he's done movies like Danny Trejo and, like, a lot of, like, these horror movies. And he just seems like the most down-to-earth, really movie nerd, right? <laughs> so I was like, dude, I, I, really, I really enjoy your enthusiasm. I love that you're, like, following your passion as far as engulfing yourself in movies. You know, that's all he does, literally. And I was like, you're kind of – he was giving me, like, a, a reason to go out there and not make excuses for not filming. You know, so that was one person for sure. And, uh, of course, the bigger ones like uh, Chris Duckman, uh, Jeremy Johns, uh, a lot of the Collider crew and stuff like that. I, I really value uh, Chris Duckman, uh, for example, because uh, or in particular, because he's someone that kind of cuts through the bullshit. <laughs> Even though a movie may be super popular, he'll give you his honest opinion, yeah. at least from, from what I've seen for the majority. And he also does, like, retro reviews and stuff like that, which I think is fantastic. I mean, you can't forget the greats, right? So... Um, and he also has a, a, a section on there called hilariosity where he makes fun of like cringeworthy videos and stuff like that, like <laughs> the room and, and things like that. But, uh, so it, it's good to be diverse, even though you may do movie reviews, as long as you're diverse and tech, uh, targeting a lot of different audiences, it's true. I think you'll be great as a review. You know, people will be great as, as YouTubers pretty much. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny you say that cause I feel like I've been noticing a lot and I did copies of it too, not mm. always going like the superhero route. Cause I feel like so much of the mm. news you hear today and so much of the content that's out there has to do with like building the, the MCU or what's going on with the Snyder Cut and all that and DCU. Yes. And I, it's very easy to keep relying on them because they're obviously extremely popular, but uh, mm-hmm. it, it's tough and you don't want to get one tracked. But it, it, I, it does become kind of defeating when you're putting stuff out there that's not getting the hits or not getting, you know, the traction, but it's something you enjoyed. Maybe, you know, a, a film that people didn't know about or whatever it may be like I can totally tell for instance like my reviews I'm still doing written uh, reviews um, mm-hmm. if I put one out I'm trying to think of a good example recently that I put out and it didn't get like anything like when I put the movie an older movie waiting with Ryan Reynolds um, mm-hmm. I put that, I out, that movie. Get much I did Mad Max Fury Road and it went over to like 200 which is big for like my daily reviews over it mm-hmm. went over 200 and I'm like what the hell is going on here like it's, guess, it's just like the 
it, it's a fan factor sometimes, you know. And and I I love I love Marvel movies too. And I'm starting to actually love uh, DC movies. I think Joker is what made me fall in love with DC again. And I was yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance on them, you know, as well as like like uh, Swamp Thing and whatnot. Yeah. So I mean, as you can see on my wall, I have a lot of like superhero and and you know horror, you know, back there. I got like a lot of like the cartoon nostalgia, Doug Funny, and you know and Tommy Pokemon, Boy. Is that is that Squirtle right there? <laughs> Oh no. no 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 no! No, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the blue one that I'm seeing? Uh, next oh, up here. Yeah. Oh, that's Nebula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was ne little Nebula. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll definitely nerd out, you know, with some with some uh, Marvel movies and stuff like that. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. They're they're too. You know, DC, Marvel, they're they're always kind of clashing. Even though even though we say that they're not supposed to, everyone usually picks a side or kind of is in the middle or whatnot. But um, yeah, I would love for people to kind of just realize that that's just another subgenre of movies, right? You yeah, you still have yeah you you still can fit those movies into drama or or, or action or or whatever it is. They don't have to be just superhero movies because. I feel like when people say, oh, you just watch superhero movies, that kind of downplays and downgrades, you know, even though they are hundreds of millions of dollars, right? I mean, that's not just it. You have to, there's so much that goes along with it, you know, all the production crew along the way, the, the um, graphic designers along, you know, CGI and stuff like that, as well as the writers and the, and the directors. If you don't have any of that along the way, the movie's going to fall flat. Jesus, when you're talking about the writers, thinking about like the MCU in and of itself, just how everything was tied in, I would love mm -hmm. to just, I guess producers too, with like Kevin Feige and all them, just sitting in a room to listen to them talk about like their master plan and how they were going through all this would just, <laughs> I would geek out totally. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and it was it was such sad news on a side note to, to hear kind of Kevin. Fe I don't know if you saw my newest video, but Kevin Feige uh, on the weekend was talking about how, uh, you, you know, he doesn't see Deadpool on the roster for the next five years. And I, that was kind of my fear. I, I think we were talking about this maybe a week ago uh, online. I was talking with someone. Uh, Do we see Deadpool in the next five years? And I said, honestly, I don't I don't see Deadpool entering. And, you know, they, they have so much other properties they're focusing on. So, yeah, yeah I, I Feige is very good at like uh, giving you news when he's not giving you news and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if him saying like, no, he's not, we don't see him on the docket for the next few years. Doesn't mean that he's not going to get, he's not going to make an appearance. Um, or, yeah. you know, I, like I think about the X-Men movies, which however they introduce X-Men, it would be such an easy way to fit him in. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I can't imagine that they're going to shelve, ryan reynolds and the popularity and this like mini franchise within a franchise that he built for that mm -hmm. long I, I maybe he's not on the docket today but that doesn't mean they're not talking about him feige does that all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and people forget too is that um you know uh someone actually left a comment today on my youtube i thought it was interesting they said if if they shelve deadpool for five years ryan reynolds is going to walk and i don't think that's necessarily true because you have to remember too hugh jackman um i mean the separation of time between x-men 3 from you know uh origins or or the wolverine or those are talking about like four or five year spans as well so that was a character that he was so invested in and people knew him for that he stuck along for the journey so i think these are kind of actors that yeah we're going to remember robert downey for iron man right but He's going to, if he continues just doing whatever he wants, he's going to break out of that mold. Yeah. But Ryan Reynolds, I think, is dedicated to that. It's, it's such a passion project for him that I think we would see him in a five, six years if, if need be. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be true. I, I just wonder what the appetite's going to be for a five-year, like a, an older Ryan Reynolds that's five years down the road. and That guy doesn't age, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. He looks the same. But he's, like, breaking into, like, cellular services now and all this stuff like he, he owns mint mobile or something <laughs> <laughs> absolutely crazy well exactly. you know not looking five years ahead but thinking about this year and yeah. movies that were originally on the slate to come out um and removing tenant from that because i feel like everyone says <laughs> I'm most excited uh, yeah. most anticipated what movies were you most looking forward to this year or are you still looking forward to oh gosh uh, as far as most looking forward to that have already passed uh, was a, definitely a quiet place too. Um, yeah. That was such a uh, that was such a phenomenal first movie, especially coming from John Krasinski, where I was like, "This guy's got it." It, it. it was one of those movies where you only had like four characters to focus on, right? 
Uh, I mean, if, unless you're counting like the baby, but you know, <laughs> you, you, you had such a tension based movie. I think someone said this in a watch along was that I don't remember the last time, you know, the theater was so quiet, you know, <laughs> people were just even chewing popcorn. You could hear people because it was such a quiet film. And that kind of almost introduced a different element of horror, like a silent film type of horror, uh, where you didn't get too much going on because it was, you know, it was whispers of dialogue. So I was really looking forward to that follow up. And the trailers totally blew me away. The one thing I would, I, I would probably get rid of in, that tr in the second trailer, uh, Quiet Place 2, the trailer, is uh, all the use of, the of seeing the monster. Like, even though we already know what the monster looks like, you also have to, even if a movie is a sequel, you always have to make like you're introducing it for a new audience. So if someone has never seen A Quiet Place and they don't know what the monster looks like, they're seeing it in the second tra in the part two trailer, right? And they're like, yeah, okay, that monster doesn't look scary. Why am I going to even go see it? So that's kind of like the element of, of surprise almost right there that. But A Quiet Place 2, um, well, of course, Tenet, uh, Black Widow we're getting. Um, I, I was kind of trying to separate myself from the MCU with that because that looks more of like an espionage a 007 type of yeah. movie. Hopefully, I know we're going to get a little bit of, you know, Taskmaster in there and stuff like that and, you know, the whole supervillain uh, aspect of it. Uh, but I wasn't 100% uh, like – that wasn't a favorite character of mine ever, really, Black, uh, Black Widow or her backstory too much. I know a lot of people disagree with me in that, and that's fine. But I was actually uh, very interested to see what they were going to do with Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, because I had um, right before COVID hit, I uh, I went to a Hollywood premiere for The Hunt, and what? we were we were in line. That was an extremely fun movie, by the way. It did not take itself seriously. If you not, one seen that. not one not bit. Not one bit. But there was a guy that was talking about how he had already seen it uh, last year because he was going to these advanced screeners, right? So he was telling me so much about it. I had to tell him I'd stop, man. Don't spoil it for me. And he's like, well, the movie wasn't finished at the time, you know? So he was telling me, that this one explains a lot about this and this and this, and it ties in all this. And I'm like, you kind of got me sold. I'm very, very intrigued. Wait, you're talking so, Wonder Woman? The 84, yeah, Wonder Woman okay. 84. Huh. Yeah, so he had, seen, he had seen it. I guess uh, it, there was a couple of Hollywood screenings where they get to see advances yeah. uh, before the CGI is even, even done sometimes, oh, wow, you yeah. know. So that was like a year in advance, you know. So I was like, wow. It sounded really fun. So I'm looking for, I was looking forward to that as well. And um, – I mean, off the head, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else got uh, – I wish I had a list right now, but – I know, right? Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, the, those ones from what I remember. Yeah, and, you know, you just kind of echoed what mine would be. Um, I, I'm always looking forward to superhero films, even as we were talking about that. But mm. um, other other ones that I was looking forward to, Promising Young Woman, I think, looked really good. Um, just a really interesting kind of, like, revenge from, like, how, you know, a woman is treated. I think I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's got, check it out. It's a, it's another indie, I believe, but it's it's something pretty good. Uh, okay. I think that was supposed to come out very recently. I'm also very interested in New Mutants. <laughs> uh, I know yes, that was, actually, I'll add that to my list. Yeah. yeah. So I that know. that's an, that's another one too. Is that I kept I was like, man, uh, like it's getting kicked around like a like a bad stepchild, right? It's it it's such a bad. What's going on with that? You know, people were just fed up, and they're just like, if it comes to VOD, it comes to VOD. But then. You lose the whole uh, fun aspect of, of just enjoying it in a theater, right? Yeah. First yeah. of all, I love Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she's fantastic. I think she's a, a star that she's kind of like with Split and then like Emma and then like even like The Witch, right? Like she was already like on her way. And then I was like, okay, like she should have been already big by now. <laughs> and we've just seen so many movies that she's attaching to. We, noticed, we know that she's going to be part of Furiosa movie. Yep. So I'm like, okay. This is her couple of years. Like, her next couple of years are going to be big for her, and I'm really excited to see uh, what – I don't know really too much about the other cast involved, let alone the story of what it's going to be, but I hear that there's going to be hints of other uh, superheroes in there or supervillains that are going to kind of peek their head in, like, at the end of the uh, post credit scene or whatever. So yeah. I'm hearing yeah, good I'm, things about it. I'm wondering if they really kind of – I don't think they retooled much. I know, like, from what I was reading that – the director is saying like this, you're going to get to see the movie that I intended to show, um, yeah. which I love. I'm very, I'm all for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wonder if now that it's being released theatrically under the Marvel brand, well, it's still 20th century, century studios Fox. or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if there will be more tie-ins than we expect. So I'm hoping that they do something with that because that's it's an easier way to kind of start down the X-Men path. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
I, 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 I come kind of with you that I, I feel like they would, uh, uh, Marvel would tie in something like add on a couple of re reshoots or, or additional Deadpool. little teasers <laughs> at the end or somewhere in there. What was Deadpool. that? Deadpool. Yeah. Oh God. If we got a Deadpool just peeking his head in really quick, I would be like, too soon. You got you, <laughs> like you like you can't give you me this. Five too years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got me too soon, but. Uh, I am looking forward to that as far as like a um, a younger generation. And once again, it, it comes back to introducing new audiences to these properties, right? So we, sure. we, we know true. that, yeah, we know that the superhero genre is probably going to get younger. It's going to the space and stuff like that. It's going to focus on a younger cast and stuff. So I think that's going to lead more. And, and all these movies are PG-13 anyway. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to just get more eyes watching these movies. And I'm happy for that. It's true. It's all about the bottom dollar. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I appreciate you doing this. I want to be respectful of your time. Let everyone know where they can find you. Oh, yeah. No problem. Uh, well, you can find me on here on Instagram at Flix Talk, F-L-I-X Talk, as well as Twitter. I'm trying to be as active as I can on Twitter. I know that kind of gets neglected a bit. Yeah. But uh, Flix Talk podcast for that one. And then you can find me on YouTube at Flix Talk. Yeah, so I'm, I'm always on there. Oh, I just started a Facebook channel. I totally forgot. I started a Facebook channel. And that one is at Flix Talk Podcast. So I'm trying to nail all the social medias, right? And there you go. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you can just Very find cool. me there on Flix Talk. Well, hey, I'm sure we'll be chatting again soon. But thank you for doing this. Fun chatting with everyone on here. And, uh, you know, it's definitely fun seeing what you're doing with your channel. I'm really – we talked about this before. You know, that like, I'm also the news guy. I love seeing the movie news go up, and you're on it. So it's always fun to see what you're doing <laughs> as well. Uh, it's almost like a friendly Thank competition you. thing when, like, we're all doing something similar. But I know. I'm watching a lot of guys' channel, too, and I'll, I'll post something up, and, like, a second later, a bigger channel will post it up, and I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I hear yeah. that. But I uh, hope you're staying safe, and uh, we'll, we'll chat soon. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, Joe, for having me on, man. Of course. Thanks, Dave. See ya. All right, man.